In this video, I'm going to provide a detailed demonstration of how to run a paired sample t-test, which is also called a dependent sample t-test in SPSS. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining what we're doing, why we're doing it, and helping you interpret the output. Now, if you remember, a paired sample t-test is used when you want to compare the means between two related groups on the same outcome variable which is also called the dependent variable. Now, the most common way that a paired sample t-test is described as and utilized is to see if there are significant differences between a pretest and a post-test. For example, I can use a paired sample t-test if I want to compare the depression scores for people who went through this particular intervention based on their depression scores before they started the intervention program and their depression scores after they left the intervention program. So essentially we have the pre-depression versus the post-depression. And if there's significant differences, that suggests that either the intervention program really works or it makes the depression worse. Now another way that a paired sample t-test can be used is to compare natural pairs. Now natural pairs are commonly referred to as husbands and wives, siblings, and twins. The way that natural pairs works for a paired sample t-test is that the couple or the natural pair is treated as one unit or as one subject. So if we're Thinking about the single subject design for the pre-post, you could also think of it as, um, let's say, the husband being treated as the pre-test and the wife being treated as the post-test. It's not actually the pre-post-test, but that might help you conceptually understand how natural pairs can be used for a pair sample t-test. So to explain this in SPSS, I'm going to use the research question, is there a difference between students' scores on the pre and post test. Now before you run any sort of statistical analysis, it's always important to check to make sure that the assumptions for that test are met. However, I'm not going to go over that in this video, so if you go ahead and check out one of the links at the bottom of this video, that will take you to another video that will explain how to check the assumptions for a paired sample t-test. Once you've either determined that the assumptions for your analysis are met or dealt with, you are now ready to run your paired sample t-test. So the first thing that you need to do is find the variable names that you need in order to run your analysis. So for me, I need to find the pre-test variable name and the post-test variable name. Now sometimes it's really easy to find because they're titled in such a way that you automatically know what it is, but sometimes that's not always the case, which is why I always recommend that you just go ahead and find what the variable name is in the beginning instead of searching for it when you're about to run the analysis. After you've located the variable names that you're going to work with, you can now go up to Analyze, Compare Means, and then click on paired sample t-test. Once you've clicked on paired sample t-test, you should get a screen that looks just like this one. So what you'll notice is that there's a box on the very left hand side and in that box all it's showing is every single one of your variables in your data file. So what you need to do in that box is locate the variables that you're going to be comparing. So for me that's going to be pre and post test. But for your paired sample t-test, it may be the husband's and wife's IQ scores, whatever pre-post-test or natural pair you're working with. So if we look at the very bottom of that box, we can see that there is the pre-test and the post-test. Now that I've found the two variables that I'm going to be working with, all I need to do is move them over into the box to the right, which is called the paired variables. So to do this, you could either click on pre-test first and then click the arrow button and then click on post-test and then click the arrow button. Or you can select both variables at the same time by hitting shift when you click the second one 
and hit the arrow button only once. This way the variables will just come over in one shot. Now once my variables are in the paired variable box, I'm going to go ahead and click on options. However, I'm only clicking on options just to show you what's there. There's not much to change, but if you wanted to, you could change your confidence interval from, nine, from 95 to either 90 or 99. But that's really personal preference and the alpha level that you're using. Once you're done with the options box, go ahead and click continue. And then to run the analysis, click OK. After you run the analysis, you'll notice that a new screen pops up which is called the output file. So what SPSS is doing is taking you away from the data file and moving you to the output file. So if you look at the top of the output file, you'll notice that there's some text. And that text is called syntax. And what the syntax is, is essentially it's the code behind SPSS. Um, but it's also just a reminder of what you asked SPSS to do. Now the main thing that you'll be looking at are the three tables in the output file. Now the first output file is simply a descriptives table. So what it's going to tell you is the n, the mean, the standard deviation, and the standard error of the mean. And this is for both my pretest and the post-test, or whatever paired variables you put in when you were running your analysis. The second box that you'll notice is the correlation box. And what the correlation is doing is testing to see whether or not there's a significant relationship between our pretest and our post-test. Now the last box is where it actually runs the paired sample t-test analysis. So here we'll find the mean, standard deviation, standard error of the mean, the 95% confidence intervals, the t-value, the degrees of freedom, and then last is the p-value. Now the first thing that I want to point out is that the mean in this table is actually the mean difference. So what it is, is it's taking the pre-test mean minus the post-test mean. And that's how we get negative 12.146. Now, to determine whether or not there's a significant difference between the pretest and the post-test, we need to look at the p-value. And the p-value is underneath sig and then in, quote, in parentheses two-tailed. So our p-value is 0 .000. Now, one thing that I'm going to point out is that if your hypothesis is directional or one-tailed, you need to to divide your p-value in half. Okay, so moving back to our example, our p-value is 0 .000. Now, since I'm in the social sciences, I use the alpha level of 0.05. So what I need to make sure is that my p-value is less than 0 .05, which 0 .00 is less than 0 .05. Thus, I can conclude that the pretest and the post-test are significantly different. Now, one thing that I'm going to point out in regard to the p-value of 0 .000 is that you don't want to put p equals 0 .000 because there's probably more numbers attached to that p-value. So it might be p equals 0 .000025. And for this reason, it's more common to put p is less than 0 .001. So if you ever get 0 .00 on your SPS output, just go ahead and write p is less than 0 .01. Okay, so now that I know that my pre and post tests are significantly different, I want to go in a little bit more detail and see where the students did better. So to do this, I'm going to look at the first box that's on the SPS output, and what it shows me is the mean for both the pretest and the post-test. And what you'll notice is that the pretest has a mean of 54.96, and the post-test has a mean of 67.10. So from this, I can conclude that these students perform significantly better on the post-test when compared to the pretest. 
And that is how you run a paired sample t-test. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. But if you're one of my students, just go ahead and text me or email me.